Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Katawa Shujo. Um, I don't know what I'm going to call this episode. I don't know what's going to happen in this episode. Um, and I don't actually have a great way of introducing it, <laughs> aside from the whole welcome back thing. But, you know, so we're just going to get back into where we left off. Um, over here. Uh, yeah, so last time well, we, we finished our first day, right, at this school. Met a couple interesting characters. Misha, Shizune, the deaf girl. Our buddy um, with the glasses. I forget his name. But yeah, we're going to get back into it and see uh, just what's going on, I guess. All right. Commentary's still shoddy. Not perfect. Um, but, you know, I'm still getting the ropes down, you know? <laughs> okay, let's get into it. Solid morning light shimmers against the light gray ceiling. I had forgotten to draw the curtains closed last night. I? This is my room, isn't it? My room. This is the third room this year that I'm supposed to call mine. Various things around here remind me that, indeed, it's me who is supposed to be the one living here. My bags on the floor, my new school books on the desk, my numerous medications on the night table. I stare at the bottles for a moment, deliberating, until I open a bottle, shake out a pill, and pop out a tablet from a foil sheet. I down them with the chaser of water without thinking about the chemistry. My uniforms are in the closet. Speaking of water... Got myself some. <laughs> I slink out from under the sheets and stretch my back before dressing up. Mm. That's that good H2O. Okay. <laughs> Putting on a new school uniform feels like dressing in someone else's clothes. The artificial smell of generic detergent invades my nose, but the feeling of fresh cloth against my back is a good one, a natural one. It feels like a school uniform, as it should. It's not much different from what I used to wear before. That goes for other things, too. So far, this place seems more or less like a normal school. Except for the people. I think back to my talk with Kenji yesterday. That's right, Kenji. Misha's constant laughter and Shizune's sweeping sign language gestures. Well, I've only met three students so far. Maybe they aren't that normal, but I'm sure others are. Or perhaps people like them are what passes for normal around here. Yeah, what does pass for normal around here? What do people do? I didn't see a lot of kids hanging around after classes yesterday, so maybe there are clubs. If so, I wonder if I should join one. All through class, the question remains on my mind, so I decided to ask Shizune about it when we split into groups. After all, she did say if I had anything I wanted to know, I should ask her. Da da da. Da da da. She crosses her arm and shifts her gaze slowly to Misha, who looks more preoccupied with trying to grind the eraser of her pencil down so that the top is perfectly and evenly flat. Da da da. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Shi Chan. Is there something you wanted from me? Oh, I see. Hmm, that's a good question, he chan My first thought is that means she doesn't know, which is worrying. Maybe I'm being too negative. Well, anyway, Misha, please don't prove me right. Dot dot dot. Oh, that's right. Everyone is encouraged to join a club. A lot of people do so because there really isn't anything else to do. There are also school events, like the festival coming up in a few days. I, I totally forgot her voice for a second. <laughs> There are also school events, like the festival coming up in a few days. Almost every student in the school tends to help out with it, doing whatever. So, you actually transferred in at a busy time. Maybe you can help out, too. Sure. What's the festival about? <laughs> Misha freezes. <laughs> I don't know, Hee-chan. The truth is, it's a local event, and I'm not from this area, so... She starts sighing desperately to Shizune, asking her to bail her out. Shizune adjusts her glasses at the end of an oddly grandiose flourish and starts signing hard and heavy. Dot dot dot. Huh? Oh. Who cares? Mifa, Misha puffs out her chest as she shouts Shizune's words at me with a disproportionate amount of pride. Too loud. I can see heads turning to look in our direction. Not so loud. Dot dot dot. Human beings evolve with each new generation. The ideals of release behind a festival will inevitably change with time. <laughs> dot dot dot. 
Now it's about delicious fried food and amusing little games that you play to win prizes. <laughs> the teacher clears his throat very loudly, batting his long wooden pointer against his other palm like a baton. He shoots a pointed gaze at us. Finally noticing where we are, Misha stifles a yelp and quickly quiets down. Shizune doesn't seem embarrassed at all, though, brushing it off without a care. Dot dot dot. We are in the middle of class and should start working. Oh. <laughs> we are in the middle of class and should start working. <laughs> That's right, Chi-chan. What? That's right. Chi-chan, are you asking because you're interested in joining a club? <laughs> it could have been my eyes playing tricks on me, but I think I saw a suspicious glance exchanged between them. Misha's tone has also changed, although it does that every other word anyway. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Misha and Shizune look at each other again. I'm about to ask what they have in mind when something dark flutters in my peripheral vision, catching my attention. Out of the corner of my eye, I see the girl with long, dark hair get up from her desk and slip silently towards the door. It doesn't seem like she was working in any group, and no one else seems to notice her but me. I glance at the teacher, who's also looking at the dark-haired girl go. Why doesn't he say anything? She's a ghost. Hee-chan, is something wrong? Do I look as uneasy as I feel? Or was Misha just looking at me, af looking after the girl who left? Uh, no, nothing. <laughs> da da da. <laughs> okay, well, like we were asking, you don't have any plans for lunch today, do you? I thought I would go to the library and pick up some books. But not really. Do you want to have lunch together then? Sure. Dot dot dot. <laughs> Yay! Wahahaha! <laughs> oh, hey, he chomped. Perfect. <laughs> Jesus. The rest of the class passes uneventfully. The girl with the long hair never came back. Before I have the time to put any more thought into where she could have gone, the teacher informs us that it's time to stop working. Shizune looks more than a little annoyed that we only just barely managed to finish all our work on time. I'm just glad we finished it at all. It's not a contest or anything. <sighs> dot, dot, dot. Yes, it is, Hee-chan. <laughs> Impossible. Really? Really? What's going on? I've noticed this before, but it's kind of funny how Misha is always moving her hands and signing not only everything she says, but what anyone else is saying at any given time. Obviously, it must be so Shizune can understand it. Her eyes dart back and forth between Misha's hands and me. I don't know who I'm supposed to be looking at. I'm talking to Misha, but that might be wrong. Maybe I should face Shizune. I'm used to looking in the direction of the person whose voice I'm hearing, but really... Shizune can't hear me, but it would be disrespectful to talk to her only through Misha. Then again, isn't that what she's doing? No, she's at least looking at me. This is all very confusing, and we'll take some time to get used to. It's not a contest, because contests are competitions over a prize. If there's no prize in the line, it's not really a contest. Shizune's eyes flash dangerously with a competitive glare. She stares at me, as if surprised that I'm challenging her. I think maybe this is a contest to her. What's a contest? <laughs> did, I, did I lose track of something? Hold up, wait a second. No, you know what? No, we're just we're gonna move on, okay. I never noticed before how dark and blue her eyes are. It's truly an alluring gla gaze. Da da da. <laughs> are you sure, he chan? Very sure. <laughs> da da da. I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> You're wrong, he chan, because I don't want to be the slowest one in the class. Therefore, what's on the line is my confidence and my abilities, and the prize is the satisfaction of proving that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Shizune pushes her glasses out the bridge of her nose in a very matter-of-fact way. I'd argue more, but the bell rings, and she quickly gets up and picks up her bag, looking at me expectantly. I had almost forgotten that I was supposed to have lunch with them. <laughs> dot dot dot. Where do you want to eat? The cafeteria? Oh. Whatever. <laughs> That's so plain. Okay, let's go. Plain? Well, I guess... At my old school, I liked to eat outside, near the back of the building. It was a good spot, but I didn't find it until near the end of my freshman year. I wonder if there's a similar place here. Misha seems to imply as much. Shizune and Misha pull me towards the cafeteria, which is surprisingly not packed. Maybe some students favor eating in classroom or outdoors. I saw some of my classmates had boxed lunches. 
After we finish eating, Misha picks up where we left off earlier. So, Hee-chan, you want to know about clubs and stuff, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Oh, damn. Right, Hee-chan. Okay, I guess it makes sense to ask first. Exchanging little nods of confirmation, they turn to face me again, and Misha straightens her posture as if she's about to deliver a speech. Hee-chan, do you have anything you're really interested in? <laughs> I used to play soccer, but I'm not really into it. I don't follow the teams and players or anything like that. As of late, I usually just read a lot. Hmm, there is a book club, right, Chi chan Right? But it seems like they have all the members they could possibly have right now. Sorry, Chi chan it's a really popular club. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Ah, okay, but more to the point, Chi chan does this mean that you don't have anything already in mind? Uh, not really. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Good, great, that's great, you chan really great. <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh god. Why is it so great? No reason. Well, you chan other than clubs and the upcoming festival, there is one other thing. Student council! I see. I didn't know this school had a student council. It was a very melodramatic setup, though, just to tell me that. I'm pretty sure the two of them know this, because Shunazune looks a little embarrassed about it, and Misha is laughing. Shizune quickly retakes control of the discussion, in a manner of speaking. After all, it's still Misha who has to voice whatever she says. <laughs> dot dot dot. <laughs> right, right. Hichan, maybe you should join the student council. They could use more people. Yes, definitely. You should definitely join. Join now, or I'll kill you. Why? <laughs> Well, for one, we can hang out every day, Hee-chan. Shi-chan and I are both in the student council. Actually, Shi-chan is the president. Hmm. I'm starting to get the suspicion that Shizune and Misha might not exactly be the most unbiased people to talk about this with. As if reading my mind, Shizune quickly adjusts her glasses and signs something to Misha. <laughs> da da da. <laughs> of course, we're not trying to get you to join just because we would obviously benefit from you joining the student council and therefore have an incentive to try and get to you. <laughs> Duh! <laughs> so you're admitting that... Da da da. <laughs> no, we admit nothing. I mean, of course it would be nice if you joined and we'd appreciate it. <laughs> but even without all that, joining the student council shows a healthy interest in the working of one's school. <laughs> yup, it's true, Hee-chan. Besides, don't you want to spend the time with us after school, Hee-chan? I can't tell if she's being genuine or if this is just really good acting. Both of them seem to be trying hard to look their cutest, although they're already pretty cute to begin with. Alright, slow your roll, Hee-sao. Okay, you only just met these guys. <laughs> well... <laughs> da da da. So it's settled then. Welcome to the student council, hee -chan. <laughs> What? No, no! Aw, oh, see, hee chan of course it wouldn't go so easily. <laughs> da da da. <laughs> yep, that's right. Though, it would be boring if it went that smoothly. <laughs> oh well, she chan owes me candy now. You were betting on it? Hey, my life is not a game here. Kind of ironic. <laughs> Shizune seems very intrigued by this when Misha signs it to her. The aggressive glint returns to her eyes. <laughs> dot dot dot. Wow! <laughs> That's interesting, Key Chat. Let's play a game! That's not what I said. How about rich man, poor man, Hee chan If you lose, you have to join the student council. No, absolutely not. Aw, why not? Well, because you two both have the same incentive and therefore the same goal, which is to get me to join the student council, right? <laughs> da da da. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that isn't my goal. But what this means is that both of you can team up and I'll be at a clear disadvantage. So, I will have to decline. Dot dot dot. Hey chan I'm very offended. Are you saying that you don't trust us and that we would pull something so disingenuous? That makes me sad. <laughs> Sorry? It's hard to tell where Shizune's influence ends and Misha's thoughts begin. Dot dot dot. In order to atone for hurting a young girl's feelings, you should definitely join the student council. <laughs> no! How about a game of paper football instead of rich man poor man? Paper football? Yeah, it's a game they play in America. You make a paper triangle and then you try to shoot it past goalposts that the other player makes with their fingers. Alright, full disclosure, has anybody ever played this game before? 
I've never played paper. Like, I've seen it at school sometimes, you know? You, like, you get, like, in middle school or whatever, you see those kids with, like, paper triangles, but, like, who actually just does that con <laughs> conventionally? It's stupid. Okay. I'm sure I pissed off some people. Whatever. My let's play. I can say what I want. Okay. Isn't it cool? It's the ultimate form of competition between two people, Hee-chan. Dot, dot, dot. And it's also played by elementary and middle school children, Shichan. <laughs> that means it's a game that really separates the boys from the men. See? I told you it's a kid's game. More like the boys from the slightly older boys. Anyway, I'm not going to play that either. Just the fact that you know about it means you're probably surprisingly good at it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. How did you know, Hichan? <laughs> Shizune frowns at Misha, telling me that she probably wasn't supposed to admit that so readily. I wouldn't say that I'm happy with their attempts to get me into the student council, but I'm a little curious about what the student council does here. I've never been on one before, or even known anybody who was a member, so it interests me. I also kind of like Shizune and Misha, so maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Dot dot dot. Okay, Hichan, how about Risk, the game of world domination? I don't know what that is. It's really fun, Hichan. You fight for control of the world with armies and everything. <laughs> Sounds like Shizune would be good at it. If you want to play, we can't have your skull. Dot dot dot? Aw, oh, really, Shichan? We can just play for fun, Hichan. Shichan hasn't played in a long time, so if you want to, there's no strings attached. I <laughs> like losing her voice the more I talk. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, perfect. We'll see you after school in the student council room then, Hichan. <laughs> Wait, why there? Because that's where we keep the game. <laughs> <laughs> I grimace to tell them how much I do not like this, but it's more for show than anything. So in the end, I agree, but only after getting Shizune to acknowledge that I don't mean anything concrete just by accepting to take a look around and play a game with her. Let's see if some of that reached well again. Yeah. Mm. Delicious. Straight from the tap. Well, that was weird. <laughs> During afternoon classes, the long-haired girl comes back and sits down in her seat without a word. Again, no one seems to notice. Or if they do, no one says anything. I want to ask Misha about it, but I don't want to be noisy. nosy. After school, Shizune and Misha quickly find me by the first floor lobby and latch onto me, covering each flank in case I might try to escape. I feel a little offended, but I'd been considering it. Nevertheless, I'm a bit disturbed that enough people have made a break for it in the past that they're on their guard. What's with the escort? This doesn't make me feel very comfortable. In fact, it makes me feel like a dangerous prisoner being transported to his cell. <laughs> What's wrong, Hee-chan? <laughs> dot dot dot. That's right, we're just gonna go play a game of Risk, remember? <laughs> I don't know, Misha. This all seems a little sinister to me. I started thinking that when we sit down to play the game, they'll tie me down and torture me until I agree to join the student council. Well, that's highly unlikely. But still, for some reason, it just seems like it would be so plausible. Getting to the student council room is as simple as turning two corners from where we started. What? That's it? This makes you guys being so on top of me seem a little silly. Dot dot dot. <laughs> That's not true, Hee-chan. Shichan says that when their life is threatened, people have shown the capability to pull off superhuman bursts of speed. <laughs> life is threatened? Her expression unchanging, Misha signs something amusedly to Shizune, who makes a baffling face and puts her hands behind her back, looking pleased with herself. <laughs> Gosh. Misha feigns deafness and hums cheerily. Stop that, I know you heard me. You have no excuse, unlike Shizune. Oh, that was humming. Okay. Shizune opens the door to the student council room. It's a very plain, sparsely decorated room, although it is quite large, maybe even a little larger than a classroom. There's a big table in the center surrounded by chairs, and a smaller desk prominently placed on the back that I assume is Shizune's. There are a few regular desks and chairs stacked to one side as well. Extras, perhaps? Aside from the tables and chairs, the room doesn't have much else to offer. Just a couple of filing cabinets and bookshelves stacked with old school records and documents. Not much else. In fact, nothing else. This is a pretty bleak room. They could at least put a potted plant in here or something. But the most noticeable thing that this room doesn't have is other people. 
Are we early? <laughs> dot dot dot. No. What do you mean no? Does it mean nobody else is coming today? Um, dot dot dot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Before I manage to ask why that's the case, Shizune claps her hands together very energetically. And dot dot dot. Hichan, let's play Risk. Come on, you promised, didn't you? You have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Do you want to know the rules? We can explain it to you while we set everything up. While Misha is talking, Shizune takes out what looks like a board game from behind one of the filing cabinets and throws it on the table. Actually, this looks kind of interesting. My, my cast freak. Oh, Aiden, cut here. After Misha spends a little too long for her liking, running through the basics with a somewhat vague and confusing tutorial, Shizune cuts in and declares the game has started with a decisive motion, slicing her arm through the air. Shizune's aggressiveness is rubbing off on me. I start feeling more competitive than I intended to be when I agreed to this. Halfway into the game, while I try to ponder how to defend against Shizune's assault from two fronts, she breaks my concentration by drumming her fingers on the table to get my attention. Dot dot dot. Shichan, Shichan wants you to know that you're taking too long to make a move. Shichan also says that she'll let you keep Australia if you agree to join the student council. I thought this was a game with no strings attached. Just the fact that she would dangle that over my head as an offer means that she knows I care about the outcome of this game. And anyway, no. <laughs> da da da. Shichan admires your fighting spirit and would be a benevolent dictator who will spare your people if you agree to join the student council. <laughs> You're so competitive, Shizune. She seems to take this as a compliment. I would expect the student council president to be a little more magnanimous. Magnanimous, yeah. Magnanimous? She doesn't seem to know the wor what that word means or how it signs, so she pulls out a piece of paper and writes it for Shizune, who in return signs it back to Misha. Misha presses her index fingers against her temple as if trying to physically imprint the word into her memory. <laughs> dot dot dot. Suddenly, Shizune bursts into a flurry of gestures. Misha looks daunted by the pace of her heated signing. Uh, wait, please, she, please slow down, Hichan. Uh, Hichan, Shichan says you're going to lose. Tell her I will crush her world empire with my rebellion. Uh, okay. Those eyes of hers shine with childlike mischief. Dot, dot, dot. She says you have no chance if you keep playing like this. No, you won't. Oh, um. Oh, what's a good choice? If it's a trap, it's smart to play defense defensively here. Competitive nature, attack aggressively. Yeah, do that. Sure. She's either really mocking me or trying to trick me. I have nothing else to lose, though, so I might as well try something different. Maybe if I spread out my forces and try to control more territories, I can recoup the advantage. Shizune seems to focus on conquering whole nations, so maybe I can sacrifice my hold on continents to gain more small countries. It's worth a shot. A few turns later, I end up losing the game anyway. Shizune adjusts her glasses victoriously and allows herself to tentatively pump a fist in the air in celebration. Da da da! I win! I win! Yay! <laughs> There's no need to translate that. It was pretty clear. <laughs> Don't look so sad, Hichan. You were really giving it your best. That's what I thought. Sometimes your best just isn't good enough, though. If anyone knows that, it's me. You did very well for someone who just learned how to play today. Dot dot dot. <laughs> Hichan, you attacked Iceland and North America at the same time. That's a very daring move. Hichan is impressed. Dot dot dot. The mark in great people is that they are daring and that they can follow through. You're already halfway there. Isn't that great, Hichan? Dot dot dot. That isn't enough, though. Just potential isn't enough. There's no point to potential if you don't want to take the first step, and there's no point to that. Oh gosh. Burping. <laughs> if you don't keep going, I want to see more. You're right, Hichan, but that's so demanding. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Shizune leans forward, suddenly looking a lot less playful and more like the serious person I expected her to be from the start. Dot dot dot. Hee-chan, would you like to join the student council? 
She really doesn't waste any time, does she? But it's only my second day of school, so I'm hesitant about committing to something so early. I haven't even taken a look at any other clubs yet. But spending time with Shizune and Misha doesn't seem like something I would hate. I still need more time to think about it before I decide for sure. Maybe. I'll get back to you on it. I say we join the student council, because why not? Plus, she's the best girl, so... <laughs> a dot dot dot. Okay, Hee-chan, but I hope you're not just saying that so we don't feel bad. No, really. <laughs> really? Hee-chan, if you're gonna say that, you're saying that is definitely the truth, and there can't be any mistaking it. I know, I know. I guess I should have my revenge for losing at the very least. Shizune smiles at that in a mis mischievous way that feels like twisting the knife in the wound of my loss. <laughs> what is that face? Ah, uh, that's thumbnail material right there. Okay. I take a glance at the clock on the wall and realize I've spent far longer playing Risk than I expected. Sorry, I think I have to go. I wanted to go to the library. It's not closed yet, is it? Shizune scratches her head and gestures at Misha. How hard can it be to determine whether the library is open? I'm gonna I'm gonna reread that. <laughs> How hard can it be to determine whether the library is open? There's a clock right there on the wall. Dot dot dot. It should be, unless the librarian is absent. I think you're right, Hee-chan. Shi-chan. <laughs> we think the library is open. It's on the second floor. Can't miss it. You want us to show you where it is? No thanks. It's okay. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> One flight of stairs up, and I run into problems. The second floor hallway is a carbon copy of the third floor one. Wide, of course, and plain, like only hallways can be. The problem is that the library's whereabouts are not as easily determined as one would think. The classrooms are marked with signs, stating which class they belong to, but then there's a plethora of other unmarked rooms. Is the library one of them, or is it just somewhere down the hall? I bet on the latter, and choose my direction at random. After I turn around the corner, an unmarked door draws my attention because it's not closed. It's not open either, though, just barely ajar so that I can see it's open and nothing else. It would make sense for the library door to be invitingly open, and while this one is not quite that, it's good enough. At the very least, it means that someone is inside and I can ask for directions no matter how embarrassing that is. I gingerly push on the center of the door with my fingertips, every muscle in my arm ready to pull back at a moment's notice. The feeling of being an outsider to this school can be, can't be shaken from my mind, so much so that I instinctively fear doing something wrong by entering. The door slowly creaks as if groaning from a deep sleep, though it was much easier to open than I'd anticipated. Leaning over and poking my head even further inside to gain sight of the room as fast as possible, the meek hello on my lips is quickly snatched away. Whoa! New girl. Dot, dot, dot. This is not what I was expecting. I mindlessly let the door open to its full extent, taking in the sight of the solitary figure taking center stage in the otherwise abandoned room. The situation steals my voice, leaving me standing at the doorway staring at the beautiful girl. Evidently having taken her time to assess the situation, the girl gently puts down her teacup and opens her eyes, but doesn't look at me. Hello there, may I help you? Staring directly in front of herself, the movements of her lips seem to break the silence rather than the words. However, it's the soft, measured voice that reminds me she's a being separate from the room itself. Not only is she likely the tallest girl I've ever laid eyes on, but even among the foreigners I've met, she's strikingly distinct. Uh, hi. Sorry for intruding, I was just kind of lost. She takes a moment to formulate a response before speaking. Every action she takes feels as if it's carefully choreographed beforehand. Care to take a seat? Unexpected, considering that I'm intruding upon her. Um, thanks. I slowly step towards another scene opposite her, the girl resting the teacup and the saucer on the wooden table in between. Alright, this girl sounds hella posh, hella British, but like a sweet British, you know? So, I'm gonna go with a voice kind of like that. Hmm. Let's see. The way she doesn't track my movements with her head is telling. That and the slight cloudiness to her eyes means she must be at least partially blind, like Kenji. Come to think of it, her voice doesn't have any detectable accent either. Okay! <laughs> Not British. I guess she must be half Japanese. 
As I take my seat, her composure takes me slightly off guard. Her air of relaxed confidence makes the silence entirely uncomfortable. The calming atmosphere is so very different from the student council office. I take it you're a new student to Yamako. Uh, yeah, I just transferred in yesterday. I get the distinct feeling that my speech patterns don't match the formality of hers, accentuated by her restrained bow of greeting. One which I hasten to match before realizing the futility of the action. I'm Lily Satao. Pleased to meet you. Hisao. Hisao Nakai. She gives a nod before gesturing roughly in the direction of her teacup. Would you care for a drink? Uh, sure. As much as it pains me, I can't keep step with her formality in the proceedings. She gives a kind nod, taking the request in stride. Without another word, she steps off the chair and prepares a second cup of tea from a collection of supplies laid out along a shelf. A brush here, a brush there, her left hand often lightly touching the side of whichever container she's pouring into. It seems to be a process she's followed dozens of times before. As I lean sideways to see around her back, she seems used to use her long, dainty fingers to measure the right amount of water in the cup. It's one thing to see the different disabilities the students in my class have, but it's quite another to see how everyone seems to adapt. Shizune and Misha have no problem working together to communicate to me, and Lily herself seems to have workarounds for problems I'd never thought of. While I feel slightly guilty about her doing the work, she seems pleased to be following the correct process of the offerer preparing the drink. So, her soft voice brings me out of my silent observance. Which room were you looking for? It's not often this classroom is visited after school. Uh, the school library. Shizune and me... I mean some classmates. It's only that it was on this floor. She finishes pouring water into the teacup as she nods, a small metallic tapping coming from the teacup indicating it being stirred. I'm aware of Miss Hakamichi, as are most students. To be with them means you're in class 3-3, no? Yeah, that's right. In the science room with Muto. She gives a small giggle before setting down the teaspoon and slowly walking towards the teacup, or the table, teacup and saucer in hand. He's quite a character. I imagine you'll like, come to like him. <laughs> Most do. As she sets down the tea, I gently take it and have a sip. I'm really more of a coffee person, but this seems like a rather bad moment to bring it up. Nonetheless, this smells quite nice. I hardly think it'd be hard to choke down. Thanks, Sitao. It tastes really nice. She smiles and quickly waves her hand in front of her face. Lily, please. There's no need to be too formal. She says this in spite of her exceedingly well-bred speech. Oh well. I guess I should try and ask her about herself, as it really doesn't seem if she's catering to me. So which class are you from? I imagine it's one of the third year classes. Correct. I'm in class 3-2, which is on the third floor, same as yours. It's taught by Miyagi, and is specifically for both blind and partially blind students. Ah, I see. I see. I, I mean, uh, sorry. <laughs> I feel like slapping myself for the faux pas. Looking at her face, though, she doesn't seem in the least bit put off by it. My mind, there's no need to change your speech on my account. Uh, sure, sorry, I guess I'm really showing my newness here. An environment like this would be a big change, so I can't fault you for it. While the same can't be said for everyone, many have come to terms with their conditions. A category which would include her, it seems. All too ready to jump ship from this particular topic, I segue into another. Do you come here often? Do you come here to drink tea often? It's a really nice place. Thinking on it, this might be her vision of the place behind my school that I'd like to have lunch at. I come here fairly often during lunch times. My duties as class representative don't leave enough time for an official club, so a friend and I use this room for having tea. Class representative, huh? Compared to Shizune, her mannerisms seem to be almost completely opposite. While Shizune is blunt and fiercely driven, Lily seems relaxed and calm, almost aloof. Come to think of it, she might be useful for a less biased view of the school's clubs. What kind of clubs are there to join? Hmm, the more popular ones are the track and field club, which uses the field near the school during lunch sometimes. The baseball club and the book club and a nook room near the library. There are also numerous small ones too, though, such as the art and music clubs. At a time when I'm just wanting to get on my feet, rushing into a club right away seems slightly unappealing. I wonder if this school shares the same rule as my old one. Is it compulsory to join a club? It isn't, though it is encouraged. Oh, good, that's a relief. 
I've really let down my guard around this girl to let such a thing slip out. The fact seems to slightly amuse her. Not wanting my tea to get cold, I finally start drinking it as Lily does the same. As I look over to the window over her shoulder, I notice the light coming into the room has a distinctly orange tint. Even here, time doesn't stand still. Huh, the time's gone quickly. Sorry? Right, she's blind. Of course she can't see the sun setting. It just looks like the sun's starting to set. It seems to come as a surprise for her. I guess she must have lost track of the time. Sorry, he said. I didn't mean to keep you from the library for so long. I quickly moved to relay her concern. But no, it's okay. The library's still open, isn't it? She pauses and then takes a moment to think on it. It's probably something I should have asked Shizune when I had the chance, but Lily seems likely to know in any case. True, it's open until 6.30 during weekdays. A quick glance at my watch confirms I have well enough time to get there. Hmm, I might get going in that case. It's been nice talking with you, Lily. She smiles and gives a deep nod, her hands still neatly folded on the table in front of her. It was my pleasure. Oh, come to think of it, shall I show you to where the library is? I couldn't possibly ask for more help. I should be able to find it all right. Well, unless my navigational skills fail me. Which they seem to have a habit of doing. It's all right. I was going to be talking to the librarian there in any case. I could introduce you. This gets better and better. It's pretty hard to deny her offer. If you're sure, then that'd be great. Thanks. As she stands up to follow me, she takes hold of a straight retractable cane that has been slipped in the handle of her bag on the floor. Compared to the cane the boy in my class had, Lily's much, looks much thinner and longer. His must be for support, whereas Lily's is for navigation. Together we have the peaceful room and enter the empty hallway on the way to the library. Side by side, my pace carefully slowed to match hers, we slowly walk through the hallway. Alright, I'm going to leave that episode there. Uh... This has been a pretty decent episode. It's a long one. Um, but, you know, I, long episodes are fun sometimes. I was planning on getting through half the day and then um, finishing the next episode at the end of this day here. Um, but it seems like uh, Lily took a lot longer to interact with than I imagined. So, anywho, tell me what you guys think. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that other Okay, shit. Uh, because if you've gotten this far, I'd hope you'd like it. <laughs> if not, you know, no worries. You do you. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really have much else to say. Sorry for the awkwardness of my conversation with y'all. But, you know, have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching.